Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to make a video for everybody out there who wants to learn how to make money on Redbubble. I've had over managing over 17 stores at one point in time. I do plan on getting back to that. I sold nine of my stores. And cumulative across all my stores, I have had over 60,000 plus sales. I'm not talking about $60,000. We have had much more than $60,000 in sales. I'm talking about 60,000 units that have sold. With that being said, I want to go ahead and share with everybody almost like a, a video that I wish I had when I first started where I can give you information that is just simply not being said when it comes down to Redbubble. Most people will give you very basic information. Here's how you create an account. Here's how you add tags. And let's be honest, those aren't too in-depth. You're not going to learn the actual information that you need to learn to actually make the money. You're not going to be able to transcend the average Redbubble seller. And what is the average Redbubble seller? Well, the average Redbubble seller is failing. That's the reality. The average Redbubble seller, um, I think the, out of all the sellers there are, uh, there are 80 something per, or less than 80%, maybe 79% that don't actually make money. They don't, they haven't made a penny on Redbubble. Um, out of the people who are successful, you have the people at the top that are hogging all the sales. And the reality is it's not by luck. It's not by being favored by Redbubble. It's not by having some connections inside, at least not that I know of, because I'm making a lot of sales and, and uh, I, I don't have that experience. It's just simply by learning how to play the game. And with any game, if you want to be successful, you have to learn how to play by the rules. And when you play by the rules, you can potentially win depending on how well you know what the rules are to be. Okay, so I want to be clear here. I am going to give you information that you're not going to find anywhere else. OK, and the reality is, is that there's a lot of print on demand sellers that will not have the same experience that I'm having today because their channels are regurgitated information. They find information on someone else uh, that's giving Redbubble information. They just spit it out. They come up with some some strategy, some idea. I really do this. And I'm going to give you guys what five screenshots here of different sales within the past let's say two days, three days, something like that. And even up to the last hour, I can take screenshots for days. I'm making literally up now anywhere from 80 to 140 sales a day across all my accounts on Redbubble. And not all of them make a ton of money. You, some sales are sticker sales that are just a few pennies, you know, 20 cents, whatever. And then there's some that are a little bit higher. You make $5, $10, $11. So it differs. But with that being said, I'm going to share this information because I truly feel that there's no one out there on this level teaching this kind of stuff. All right. No hate on anyone else, but that's just the reality. And by the way, I want to, I want you guys to judge me not based on my screenshots because the reality is, and the truth is screenshots can be faked. I want you to judge me based on the logic that I'm giving you. And if my logic sounds stupid or it sounds bad, um, then write it in the comments. Tell me I'm stupid, but I could tell you this. You don't get past 60,000 sales by luck, like I said earlier, or by being stupid. You play the game very, very logically, and it takes some sort of level of knowledge, and I'm here to share that with you today. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me just share with you a few of my screenshots here, and I'm actually going to be doing you guys a favor, and these screenshots that I picked come from two different strategies behind the art. I'm only going to show you the art for one of these images, but I'm going to give you both of these platforms that created the art for me to show you what is capable and how you can do it yourself. All right. So the first four screenshots I'm going to show you, they all come from the art comes from the exact same source, which is a free pattern software that I show here. I've made two videos, I believe, on this pattern software. Maybe three, maybe, but I think two. This pattern software, I've been talking about it for maybe the first video, maybe I created two weeks ago. I could be wrong. Maybe two weeks ago. I don't know. Uh, maybe even a week and a half ago. I'm not sure. 
The reality is, is these sales, like I said, were created days ago, two days ago, three days ago, no more than that, up until the last hour, like literally an hour ago or two hours, an hour and a half ago. So I want to explain here. My sales, some designs, I do wait a little while for them to sell, but sometimes they don't. Now, the designs that I'm showing you, waiting two, three days for a design to sell is not much time whatsoever, okay? So uh, I'm just saying that some designs do take a little while to sell simply because I'm not going to give you a false reality, a false narrative, a false story, okay? So let's go ahead and first take a look at what the resource is. So the first resource is the pattern software. These four screenshots come from the pattern software. The last screenshot comes from a software called the Unlimited Copyright Free Images Tool. The reason why I decided to throw this screenshot in is because somebody commented the other day on one of my videos using this tool. They said, uh, but yeah, but these images don't actually sell on Redbubble. Once again, most of the comments that people state when it comes down to Redbubble cannot be backed up by any kind of logic, any kind of statistics, any kind of reasoning or profit whatsoever. People just pull stuff out of thin air, come up with an idea in their head, and believe it to be true. And that's not the reality. Have, if you guys have ever heard of cognitive dissonance, the gap in between the fact and your opinion is the information you tell yourself in the middle. And that is how they validate their own ideas. And like I said, most people's ideas come from their opinion, not logic, not statistics, and not real information. So I'm going to show you these four screenshots. Okay, this screenshot, I believe... I didn't take, uh, it looks like I cut off the date. I don't remember when this sold. Maybe yesterday, maybe a day before, I don't remember. But you can clearly see it's an iPhone 11. I uh, erased the, um, uh, I should have erased my name here, but I erased the image and I erased the name of the product. The profit was uh, $5.98 Australian um, and US $3.77. Not bad. Once again, it's coming from a free site. Uh, second thing here. This is, I actually did take a picture of the date here. Two days ago at 7.01 p.m. We have here uh, a cotton tote bag. Okay. Profit on that was $2.46. Notice, by the way, I'm not preaching some crazy margin BS garbage. 20% margin on this product. This product was 20% margin as well. Right here. This was a zipper pouch okay a zipper pouch um for uh i don't even i can't even remember what it looks like but um margin two dollars and eight cents i think i think what is that like a fanny pack something like that zipper pouch okay margin two dollars and eight cents all right uh there you go 20 percent margin all right next product graphic t-shirt uh canadian comes out to eleven dollars and seven cents profit and um the margin 30%. So a little bit more on this product, but there you go. All right. And you guys know what I say about margins. I select my margins very strategically. I made a video on that. You can go ahead and watch it. I'm not going to repeat it here. And then finally, the last uh, product that sold, I'm actually showing the actual design. And I wanted to show this because this is so simple, so simple. It's just a matter of people doing it, right? The money is on the table. It's just a matter of you grabbing it right? And this sold uh, three days ago with $2.57, I don't know, what is that, pound sterling? Comes out to $3.17 US, okay? That's my margin, at a 20% margin. Where is the design that sold one hour ago? Here it is. This is the one hour ago, okay? So one hour ago, this thing sold, this product sold. I'm not going to tell you what the product is. It is a pattern. I'm not going to share the keywords that I've used. I'm not going to share the titles, all of that information, I've, sh I've shared guys here how to fish. I've taught you guys how to fish. I've shown how to grab tags. I've shown how to title properly. I've shown how to do all these things. All right, but $11.07 Canadian with $8.10. Now, once again, I'm showing these screenshots. Why? Once again, screenshots can be faked, okay? But the reality is, is I want you to judge me based on what I'm saying, all right? If you believe these are fake, I mean, God help you. I don't know what else to say. 
Um, they're definitely not, but uh, it won't help me to try to prove it to you in a video form. I'm not going to go out of my way to start blurring certain things of the video and showing the emails and refreshing the... I'm not going to do all that, all right? If you want to believe it, believe it. If you don't want to believe it, don't believe it. But now I'm going to give you the actual information, okay? I want you to understand that the very first step to making money on Redbubble, and when I, sp when I say money, guys, I want to be clear because there's other people as well who will get maybe a sale a month, two sales a month, and say that they've made money on Redbubble. I'm not going to say names of who these people are, but that's not money to me. No disrespect. I'm not being disrespectful, okay? Um, but when I look at money, when I say, oh, I've made money on this, I'm looking at it to pay something in my life, paying a car bill, paying a mortgage, pay something, okay? Um, I'm looking at some sort of success level that is not average attain, attainable, attainable by average, you know, level of effort. That's what I'm looking for. So if you have a store making $600 a month, that's a little bit of money. That's not bad. You know, if you're making $4,000 a month, that's good money. If you're making $15,000 a month, that's great money. Okay. I'm not here to demean anyone, but like I said, there are YouTubers out here and I'm not trying to insult anybody. And that's why I'm not going to say names. But there are people out here who might make, you know, $5 a year on Redbubble, $50 a year on Redbubble and say they've made money. That's not money. No disrespect. But if you're making that much on Redbubble, you really shouldn't be teaching anybody how to make it. You should actually probably go to school for it to learn what you're doing because that's no level of success, in my opinion. For a teacher, that is. Not for a student, but for a teacher. I mean, if you've been working for three months, you haven't got a sale, you finally got a sale, that is some level of success, okay? But that's a different conversation because that's students versus teachers. They're not the same thing. So if I have a teacher, I want to learn from the best. I don't want to learn from somebody who's made, you know, like if I want to learn basketball, I'm not trying to learn from somebody who made D1 in college. I'm trying to learn from the very best. But once again, that's my personal opinion. I could be wrong about that. Let's go ahead and get into the game, okay? The game of Redbubble. The first thing you want to understand is that Redbubble is a numbers game, okay? You're going to have so many people, if you go and read the forums, and I actually advise you don't, read the forums, read comments of videos, people are going to sit here and say, I, I worked so hard and I don't make any money. And then when you really look deeper into the situation, you look at their store, they might have made 30 designs, 50 designs, 80 designs, and their designs are garbage. Even if their designs are good, they're just not being seen. There's a lot of details behind the reason why, and they quit too early. I want you to understand that once again, I'm going to repeat the statistic, and this is from the Investor Center in Redbubble. The people who have invested in Redbubble, they are, they are uh, Redbubble is required, the Redbubble group is required to give information back to their investors. 80% of sellers have not made a dime on the platform. A dime, not a penny on the platform. So I want you to understand that most people are unsuccessful when it comes to the platform. Most people are unsuccessful. What does that mean? That means the people at the top are making the majority. And once again, it's not a class system. It's not unfair treatment. It's none of that. It is simply controlled behavior, okay? The more control you play in the game the better success you will have. Let's go ahead and talk about what are these pillars of control, okay? We already mentioned that Redbubble is a numbers game. I'll explain what I mean by that. I get sales on a daily basis from designs that I've created last year. Do you guys remember that stint I had of time where I was creating a design a day, every day for 60 days? Every day I'm getting sales from those designs. Every single day. Some designs will go... Every three months, they'll get a sale. Some designs will take two weeks to get a sale. Some designs will get a sale every other day. Some designs will get five sales a day. Now, I want to be clear here. The designs that I have that are getting multiple sales a day are on the top of pages that are competitive with over 50 to 80 plus thousand competitors on that page. I'm not going to expose what those are because once again, I'm not ready to expose I'm actually, I'm never going to be ready to expose the actual stores that make me money because once again, copycats are alive and well. Um, but 
the the habits that have got me there don't happen all the time for all designs. This is why I say you have to learn how to play the game. So the first step is it's a numbers game. Understand that the more you upload, the higher the number is, the higher chance you have of creating sales. The second thing you want to realize is that you don't have to like the design to make money, i.e., I'll give you a perfect example, okay? Let's go ahead and use, I don't know, let's use this diamond pattern as an example, okay, on Pattern Hippo. Let me click Inspire Me like five times, okay? You see this pattern design? I can export this in 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, okay? I can take this design and I can ins export it by 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, all right? I can paste it on pretty much every single product that that exists on Redbubble. Some I, I would never buy this on anything. Not a t-shirt, not a hoodie, not a button-up shirt, not a bag, nothing. I would never buy this, okay? But somebody out there in the world would. You have to understand that. Somebody would. So every single thing that you could potentially upload has value. Now, the value that it has is determined by the market. It might be 25 cents a year of value. It might be $15 a year. It might be $100 a year. It differs. You want to upload every single design that you possibly have. Now, I'm not telling you to break the rules. Redbubble has a rule where now you can only upload 30 designs a day. It would be foolish to break the rules. Don't break the rules. But what you want to do is you want to figure out how can you upload all these designs. Now, I want to be clear, okay? There are three components to every single design. The first thing is designs need to be seen. The second thing is designs need to be appreciated. And the third thing is designs need to be created. Now, this might seem obvious, okay? Designs need to be created. Designs need to be seen. Uh, all this, they all have to happen simultaneously. I'll explain. You have people who will go out there and create five designs. They'll be the most beautiful designs ever. The store will have five designs. They're the most beautiful designs. You spent 20 hours on each design. Beautiful. Amazing. You're an amazing artist. But you'll make zero dollars. You know why? Because firstly, five designs are not enough to be seen. They're not, you're not going to catch enough waves out there to be seen. Now, you can make the argument that you could use social media marketing, which, by the way, I have promoted heavily the concept of using social media marketing, making a lot of money doing it. Okay? I've literally showed... The very first sale that I created on a demo store, a store that I literally created just to show people on YouTube how to get the job done on Redbubble, within 16 hours, I got my first sale doing it. This stuff is not, I don't, this is not theory for me. I know what I'm talking about, all right? You can go ahead and watch that video, by the way. But anyways, so designs need to be seen. They need traffic and they need lots of it, okay? But I don't want you to think of it from a design to design perspective you know, standpoint, I want you to look at it from a store standpoint. How much traffic is my store getting on a daily basis? This is why if you guys have seen my videos in early 2022 or late 2021, right? We're in the end of 2023 here. If you have seen those videos, what did I used to say? I used to say it was phenomenal if you can get one organic visitor a day per design. Why did I say that? Because it's a numbers game. One organic visitor a day per design equals what? Equals the recipe to success on a very basic level. Think about it. If you have 100 designs on your store, okay, and most people don't have this happen. I'll explain why in just a second. But if you had 100 designs in your store that are all getting one visit a day each, that is 100 visitors a day. 100 visitors a day equals to 3,000 visitors a month. But really, what does 100 visitors do? A day equal. If you had a conversion rate of just 1%, 1% only, you'd be getting one sale a day. Now, sometimes that sale might be a quarter, like 25 cents. It might be, uh, you know, uh, $10. It might be $4. It might be whatever, but that's one sale a day. That's better than getting one sale a month or one sale a year, right? Now, Let's get to the part where why doesn't that happen for most people? Why do not the, why do they create designs that do not get a, a, a visit a day, at least a visit a day? Why is that? I'll explain. So, it really comes down to the root of not accurately picking or you know what? Let me rephrase what I'm about to say. It is 
comes down to the root of not understanding the customer. I'll explain. There's a lot of ways that you can cause your design to not get seen amongst the masses. I'll give you a simple example, and I, I won't be able to run through all the examples, but I'll give you a few. Let's just say the individual creates a beautiful design, but there's 50,000 other competitors, and they're on page 472. Who's finding the design? Who's finding it? Tell me. You tell me who's finding it. If they're not doing any kind of social media marketing, there's no way they can compete. No matter how amazing their design is, they're not making money. Point blank, period. Okay? That's one example. Another example I'll give you. Niche selection. This comes with experience in the game. But there are people that what do they do? They just go copy others. There's going to be people who watch this video today, see that I recommend using this pattern software. And I didn't really even heavily recommend it. I just simply said I made money using it right? And people will go out there and they will look at what I just did and then they will go make a hundred patterns, but they're taking one part of the equation and they're going to go post a hundred patterns. They're obviously going to fail. Why are they going to fail? Because they, they forgot about everything else needed, the tags, the titling, you know, the marketing, so many different things. And then they're going to expect to make money and they're going to fail just like most people would. So, what I'm trying to say is you are not creating a vector to, to getting your design seen. Now, what are the proxies that can make that happen? The first thing is obviously social media, okay? But social media is not a requirement. The story that you're seeing that had generated these sales did not generate them off of social media, okay? And I'm talking about the first four because the first four are all the same store, Okay, the fifth store is not the same store. It's a different store, but I, I figured to show you that because that's relatively important. But anyways, okay, the first thing is social media. That's an option. Okay, obviously, if you want to make more money, use social media. You don't don't. I, I'm not here to convince you. I have so many videos on there showing you how to do it, how to make the money, whatever. That is one proxy example. The next example is proper tags. I'll give you an example. If you're using the right tag, and by the way, picking the right tags is dependent upon picking the right niche. Now, I, there's no way I can give you all the information in one video. You're really going to have to look at my videos. I have over a thousand videos on YouTube about this, but picking the right niche means picking the right keyword. I've spoke about this before, but every keyword on Redbubble is a niche of in and of its own. Now, you might say, Oh, a niche is an idea, whatever. You're thinking out of it from an intellectual perspective. I'm not. I'm thinking of it from a keyword perspective. If we use the keyword animal and we use the keyword whale, they are indeed the same niche. A whale is an animal. However, whales and animals are not presented the same results on Redbubble. Therefore, they are different niches because they are different keywords. Okay? Each niche has its own competition. And more importantly, from an algorithmic standpoint, each niche has its own collective keyword relevance. What is a collective keyword relevance? Well, I'll just kind of explain it as simple as possible. The Redbubble algorithm currently, from what we know, does not have an AI that can scan the image and determine what the image actually is. Okay? And this technology is very new, so Redbubble doesn't have it. Definitely doesn't have it. But it currently doesn't do that. So then red, what, what happens? Redbubble asks you to describe what's in the image through proxy of the tags, right? They tell you, tag your design. So if you have like a picture of a cute elephant, a baby elephant, you're going to start writing words like elephant, baby elephant, uh, cute baby elephant, whatever it might be. You know, I don't, I don't care what the keywords are, but I'm giving you an example, okay? A lot of the times, people are not picking A, the right niche. It's way too competitive, at, for their experience level. And then they're picking keywords that don't relate from an algorithmic keyword perspective. Not from an intellectual perspective, but from an algorithmic keyword perspective. So what does that look like? If you have a bunch of tags in your design, right? And one of the tags is not related, one keyword is not related, you're decreasing the relevance to your design. And I'll actually just show you here what I mean when I say relevance. If we go to Redbubble, Okay, 
and we and Red Bubble, this used to be much more dramatic last year or the year before. But if we type in something like, let's type in uh, Pink Rose, okay? If we type in Pink Rose, okay, and we see the most relevant, there's a reason why they come up in this order. The reason why the designs come up in this order is off of three main pillars. You have favorites, you have keywords, and you have sales. Not specifically in that order. Keywords is the very first thing that determines order. The second thing is the number of sales, meaning, okay, this design has most likely, for the keyword pink rose, has more sales than this design. However, that is in consideration with the tags being used. Because if you actually go over here and look at best selling, it will change the organization of the designs. Why do I say this? Simply because best selling does not mean most relevant. Okay? This has more sales than this, but this is not most relevant. That's why if we go over here to most relevant, it doesn't show up the top for the word pink rose. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Now, this is complicated. I'm not going to be able to break it down all in this video because I've done many videos before and we'd be sitting here for like literally 15 hours. And that's why I created the tagging course. The tagging course explains the algorithm to the utmost specificity. Okay. I'll leave the course link in the description box down below if you're interested in watching it. If you're not interested, it doesn't matter. Just keep watching. But this is a course that specifically, to, you know, the, the curriculum is here. I don't have to explain it, but it's a course. By the way, it's not expensive. It's $40. I'm not trying to convince you to buy it. I'm just simply explaining what it is because I know I'm going to get questions about it. It's a Redbubble SEO tagging course that goes over the tagging and the titling for Redbubble to make sure that you understand how to get your Redbubble design seen. Okay, so that's that part. But anyways... Redbubble organizes designs based on relevancy. Understood? So if a design is deemed relevant, sorry, I had to stop my recording. If, if the design is deemed relevant, right, what's going to happen is, is Redbubble is going to look at the tags to deem it relevant in the first place. Okay? And when a design tag is included that is not data backed or backed by data, in the current algorithm with the current designs, then it's going to kick it off, okay? It's not going to be on the first page. It could be on the second page, fifth page, tenth page, and we're assuming that there's some level of competition here. Obviously, if you have a niche with 50 designs, you're going to end up on the first page by default because there's only one page to begin with, okay? So that is the second thing, is being seen by proxy. How do you be seen by proxy? Well, like I said, we just mentioned some of those examples. I'm not going to give you all of them. I gave you three right now. Number one was social media. Number two is picking the right keyword, but picking the right keyword based on number three, which is the right niche. Okay. I actually said this. I mentioned this in my course where I said Redbubble niche research is actually not necessary. And I was actually half wrong because it is necessary up until the point where you gain enough experience to understand Redbubble niche research to where you don't have to actually do it anymore, okay? And what do I mean by that? There are certain things when I'll post on Redbubble where I'll know if it will get a sale in a week, a two weeks, a month, and I'm not always right. I'm not always right. I have to admit that. But there are some times where I know for sure this design will eventually get a sale and boom, it gets a sale in a month, a week, whatever, the reason why I know that is because I didn't have to research that. There was no uh, statistics that is giving me certain data on it. I knew it because of my experience. And like I said, in the beginning, yes, if you're a beginner, you're absolutely going to have to do niche research. And that's obvious. That's assumed and it's obvious. But when I say re Redbubble niche research is not necessary, after you reach a certain level of experience, it isn't necessary, especially if you're working in the same niche which is something that I've been heavily preaching on not only just my courses, but also in my free YouTube channel where I say, stick to one niche in a store. One of the biggest mistakes people do is they have all these bunch of niches in one store. You need to have one overarching niche to where a customer can come to your store and buy multiple products. Number one, it helps from a social media marketing perspective. And number two, 
it helps from an algorithmic understanding perspective from your own understanding. When you're creating designs in one niche, you know what keywords to use, you know what keywords not to use, you can upload faster, all these, there's so many benefits. Like I said, I can't go over everything here, but that's one of the benefits, all right? So we went over two main concepts within the three pillars, okay? We went over being seen, and the, and the second thing we went over is being created, okay? The third pillar is being desired, okay? And if you didn't catch the concept when I was talking about being created is, once again, I was mentioning it's a numbers game. The designs have to be created, and you have to create a plethora of them. None of this nonsense where people say, oh, I create only quality, not quantity. All of that's BS. If you want to play the game of Redbubble, you need quality and quantity. You can't win in a game where you're just only producing quality, all right? I mean, that's just so asinine. I'm not even going to get into it. But regardless, let's go ahead and continue. You need both. Okay, let's just put an end to that. Now, the third pillar. What is the third pillar? The third pillar is it needs to be desired. Okay? Now, there's actually a fourth pillar that is kind of invisible. But we'll talk about that towards the end. Okay? But designs need to be desired. Now, this really shouldn't have to be stated. But unfortunately, I do have to state it because there are many people that don't understand the concept. Your designs have to look good, okay? And I've said this before, but some people might say beauty is subjective. Yes, beauty is subjective when you're comparing the top 10%. But beauty is not subjective when it compares to the whole entire population. If we walked in a room with 100 people, most people can separate the difference between ugly and pretty. Most people can do that, okay? Beauty is not subjective when it comes down to the population as a whole. It is very objective. It is very objective if something looks good, okay? I mean, everybody can tell that poop on the ground is not edible. Beauty is not subjective. Uh, beauty is not subjective, yes. It is completely objective. Nobody would sit there and look at poop and say, Mmm, that's delicious, unless there's something wrong with them. Now, once again, these are things that are obvious. And so you have to look at your art and say, is this actually look, does this look good? Does this look on par with my competition? Okay, I've said this before, but designs have to be buyable. And what does being buyable mean? They have to look good enough to be purchased, right? They have to look good enough to be purchased. They don't have to be the best art in the world. You don't have to be Michelangelo or uh, what are those other artists, uh, Leonardo da Vinci or what, whoever these guys are. You don't have to be an artist on that level. You just have to be good enough to make money. Now, okay, this is what leads into the uh, th uh, fourth pillar that is kind of invisible, okay? Because what people then complain about, because they always got to find something to complain about, is they say, well, you're telling me to do niche research. You're telling me to pick the right titles. You're telling me to pick the right tags. And now you're telling me to create a good design too? I don't have time to do all this. It takes me hours just to create one design. And this is the third pillar, or the, excuse me, the fourth pillar that kind of sits next to the pillar that is designs need to be created. Well, designs need to be created with efficiency. Efficiency is the fourth and final pillar. It is relatively invisible because if it, efficiency, nobody really cares about efficiency. Nobody talks about it. And you, you could watch videos on YouTube about tagging, and yeah, they'll give you some BS, garbage, beginner advice. Oh, this is how you find tags and copy and paste it. All garbage, okay? But efficiency is something nobody talks about. I've never seen one person on YouTube talk about efficiency. Efficiency is the most important thing, and it's going to keep you sane when you actually tend to start working. Because to even get started is the hardest part, but to keep going is even harder. And efficiency is what keeps you going. And I'll explain what I mean. If you're spending four to five hours on a design, logically, no human being would sit there and do 30 designs a day on Redbubble. They couldn't. They have families. They have businesses. They have jobs. Nobody has time to do that. So that is the fourth pillar is they have to be good looking and they have to be created with efficiency. Good looking, desired, that's the third pillar. But fourth pillar, efficiency. Now, how do we bridge the gap between these two pillars of creation and efficiency? Well, it's very simple. 
you have to create a system for yourself that allows you to create good looking designs that are buyable, buyable designs. I want to stress that word, buyable designs. You do not have to be some Michelin star artist, okay? You have to have buyable designs, meaning they're good enough to be purchased, okay? And they have to be done efficiently. You have to create a system. I already created that system for myself and I mastered it. And you could check here the POD design course. This course has helped so many students not spend hours and hours and hours of designs uh, on designs and get the job done quickly. I'm not going to share what that system is here. There's no way I'm going to do it. People have paid hard earned money for the course so they can get access to that. But it's a system that you can follow that will not only A, generate sales, but B, create results. Why? Because it's backed off of the proper training when it comes down to proper niche tagging, right? Finding the right niche, then tagging, then titling, okay? It's backed off of that. Understand, if you have the right niche, if you have the right keywords, if you have the right titles, if you have everything in place from the semantics, but your design looks garbage, it's worth nothing because nobody's going to buy it. But let's take things around. If you have the best title, the best tags, and let's just say your design is good, you'll get sales. But if you're not doing that efficiently, if you're not doing that every single day, many times a day, you're not going to make money. What's, get, what's the point of making one design that took you 10 hours to make and it sells once a month? What's the point of that? I mean, there are people in the Philippines making more money than you. No disrespect to the Philippines, but Philippine wages are very low. I mean, probably India is a little bit lower, but I have virtual assistants that work for me in the Philippines. They make four or $500 a month. I mean, this, and they're part-time workers. So the wages are not that much. But the point is, is that I'm saying is that you need to get paid for your time. You can't just sit there and work all day and, and make no money. That's crazy, right? So... Um, I can't judge anybody who sits there and says to me, you know, I'm quitting because I'm spending five to 10 hours creating designs. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. It, sh it should not take that long. I could tell you this, when we were doing 60 designs a day, I was able to crack down on one hour of work. One hour was like my record, like a little bit less than one hour, like 58 minutes was my record of uploading, creating those 50, those designs, 60 designs we're talking about. And now it's got even easier. Now you can only do 30 designs. So now it shouldn't even take that much time either. The point to everything that I'm trying to say is the four pillars. Live by it if you want to be successful with Redbubble. They have to be desired. They have to be created. They have to be created with efficiency. And they have to be seen. And once again, there are vectors as to how those things happen. But you have to master those things to make that happen. And you have to ask yourself, where am I going wrong? Are my designs desired? Are they good enough? Are they viable? If they are, then ask yourself, are they being seen? And the, and the answers, by the way, to these questions, guys, lie within your analytics. If you have a lot of traffic, but you're not getting a lot of sales, well, guess what that means? Your desire, your, your designs are not desired and they're not, or maybe they're not placed correctly for the niche, right? Because whenever we say they're not desired, it's specifically for that niche, right? We have to put that little asterisk there and say for that niche. You know, if I'm, if I'm creating a picture of a bunny rabbit and I'm tagging it California, people who are searching California are not interested in a picture of a bunny rabbit. So they're not desired for that niche, but that's a whole different conversation. But once again, you have to figure out what the proxies to those solutions are. So if they're not being seen, what are ways I can make my design seen? Social media, titling, tag, etc. Okay. These things. So when you string that along with efficiency, and you're doing that over a period of months, weeks, maybe even years, and you're doing it over and over and over and over again, guess what? You now have a lot of results and you get so much results to the point where, yeah, you can walk away for five months and still make money every single day. You can do that because you've created so much momentum to where now the business is pushing itself. Okay. And once again, if you want success in any business, this is not just Redbubble, but any business, you have to learn how to play the game. And I'll be honest, in some businesses, I haven't learned how to play the games for certain businesses, okay? Certain things, I just haven't learned how to play the game properly. Some businesses, 
I've learned what it takes to play the game, and because of my moral ethics, I don't want to play the game. I, I'd rather play a different way. That's morally righteous in front of God. That's just my personal opinion. But then there's some businesses, like Redbubble, where I've learned how to play the game, and I look at it like there's no moral issue, and I play the game. So this is the end to my video on how to make money on Redbubble, a tutorial, if you will, and how I created over 60000 plus sales on Redbubble. Not $60,000, 60000 plus sales on Redbubble. So hopefully this video was informative, and more importantly, it causes you to be introspective about the questions that you have. I'll leave all the links below, the pattern software, okay? The unlimited tool. By the way, for some people that want to know about the unlimited tool, very simple. This tool is what created this sale. Uh, I should probably make a separate video on it. I will if you guys want me to. I'll make a video tomorrow. How about that? I'll make a video tomorrow. Come by tomorrow if you want to see the video on this, on this, uh, how I made the sale for this. I'll explain it. All right. And I'll leave a link in the description to all the courses, of course. Pattern Hippo, the free tool, unlimited tool, free tool, not free, what does it cost, $9.99? What does it cost here? $9.99 a month. Um, these sales were made in, in a matter of days. And by the way, there was much more sales in between this. I just simply gave you a few examples. Um, this sale was what, one hour ago, two hours ago? Right now it's 8.50 p.m. This sale was at 6.02. Uh, I, if I check my email right now, I probably have a couple more sales since then on just this account. We're not talking about all accounts, but once again, I'm not going to, you know, beat a dead horse. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Peace out. Bye.